This first piece I, I wrote about 5.30 a.m. last night. Um, it's called uh, Immediate Race um, in the Middle of Things. <clears throat> Immediate Race, I begin. Immediate Race, I'll end. In between, I'll erect milestones over the hurdles I've overcome that don't seem so daunting because they lie in the past. In truth, the notion of prevailing over obstacles always seemed, in retrospect, to produce circumspect fears of falling from the imagined heights of success, once deemed unattainable, incomparable with previous history, injected with tightrope walking anxiety. Safety nets are illusions that become reality once one's lost the fear of falling. Because you practice striving for more, and, know, and you know you can find your center of balance on a high wire, or when you breathe deeply and accept life as it is, rather than what you want it to be. In medias race, I begin. In medias race, I'll end. Thank you. Um, I've been going through some stuff with uh, my mother and her trying to get over cancer. Uh, a good friend of mine lost his mother last week to cancer. Um, and another friend, his girlfriend's mother's having issues with her cancer. and That doesn't look positive at all. Um, this is a poem I wrote um, to, about my friend Ken who died uh, approximately three years ago from cancer. Mm -hmm. It's called a uh, token of friendship. Mm -hmm. Walk proudly into the heart of the setting sun. May the dusk in your essence fuse into one. As the smoldering horizon disappears behind a black curtain of night, a sullen moon phases into existence. Veiled behind dark clouds of morning, the heavens bow their heads in silence, receiving a valiant and humble soul into their ranks to glimmer forevermore. Offstage, sunlight is held at bay, awaiting its call. Torrents descend throughout this longest day until no more tears can fall from the sky. Purged clouds dissipate into nothingness, revealing a dignified celestial cast of stars an ensemble with the brightest of additions, looking down on me, giving me strength throughout all my moments of darkness. Shine upon me, radiate your gallant light. I shall feel your presence pulsing in my chest. When I feel besieged, like you, I shall fight, knowing deep inside I've given it my best. Uh, this is a relatively new poem. It's called Higher Self. You are the force that beckons me forward when life bottoms out and I'm stuck in the mud of my own undoing. You are the face that welcomes me in the mirror when I can't face myself and I ruminate over the woes of yesterday I can't erase. You are the one that puts me in my place when my self-regard self wanes and I can't see the point of treading water to stay afloat. You are the one I become that writes my nary navigated course when reason fails as a compass and I battle the Sisyphean rock of emotional inertia weighing me down. Uh, this is a little more uplifting piece. Uh, this is called Ticket to Ride. It's kind of a parable. Someone sold Lionel a ticket to ride on the hot air balloon of existence. He kept it locked away for years, waiting for the perfect time to arrive when he could finally begin his journey. Now retired, exhausted after working his life away for someone else, he concluded a vacation was in order. 
deciding to finally cash his ticket in. As Lionel approached the majestic sky blue dirigible, butterflies fluttered in his stomach in, in, in anticipation of setting sail into the sunset. Upon arriving at the oft anticipated takeoff site, Lionel, on edge, extended his weathered hand, tightly grasping the ticket he held his whole life. Instead of grabbing the ticket, a complimentary hand on board reached out to him in seeming friendship, while the other embraced his arm, welcome, welcome, welcoming him aboard. Lionel was baffled. The ticket taker seemed uninterested in collecting his fare, so he emphatically insisted that this was his ticket he had paid for, while thrice pointing at it with his index finger and holding it up to the airman's eye. The aviator explained that the flight has always been free, and apologized that someone or some institution had defrauded him into believing he needed to procure a ticket. Reluctantly, Lionel allowed himself to be guided into the basket, muttering, Is this allowed? Aboard my craft, you have permission to do anything you like without a material cost. In fact, thinking like that is what's holding you to the ground. The voice lingered in Lionel's ears as the speaker vanished into thin air, the balloon swiftly sky-scaling like a cooped kite loosed from captivity. Freed of the ballast that clung on his shoulders for decades, Lionel defied gravity and discovered he was a natural pilot with his head in the clouds, just like he was as a child, only wiser, much wiser. <laughs> All right, this is uh, from Courtney. This is a, a poem that I know she likes. Um, I actually made a couple little changes to it. It's called Paradigm Shift. Old man, bitter and lonely, how do you feel you're the only one who knows better? You mock protesters, comparing your apples of discord with their orange flames of ardor. Old man, you don't understand the world. Does it revolve around your solitary experience? You are deaf to the tone of evolution, out of tune with reality, trying to incite counter-revolution with mere reactionary rhetoric. Old man, your golden era never existed, except <coughs> in your stagnant imagination. You've laboriously breathed through all the ages and stages of mankind's ascendancy, and have always been the same chattering character. Old man, you drown when you swim upstream against the current of progress, and end up belly up on the beach because you can't even tread water, and you forget your windbags are not gills. <laughs> Old man, your days are numbered. I shall commence the countdown and watch you disappear as irrelevant without a flag waving atop a pole, nor any monuments sanctifying your mythology. Old man, meet new man and woman. Let's call us equal. Thank you.